Hey guys, Mrs. Gatch here. Today I'm gonna go ahead and give you a quick tutorial over one of my favorite apps um, that I use pretty much on a regular basis in both my personal and professional life, and that is Snapseed. Um, it is made by Google, so you can find it on both iOS or on Android. Um, I tend to use it on my phone usually, but today I'm gonna give you a tutorial over what it looks like on the iPad because that's what we use in class. So let's go ahead and get started. So when you open up Snapseed, this is what it looks like, really pretty kind of opening screen. And then you just have to open up a photo. Now you have a choice. You can either take a picture um, or open a latest image or open from your device. These are pictures of my really adorable nieces. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose um, this one right here, which is actually a photo that I took a couple weeks ago on my walk home from to, to school. So this cat was just feeling adventurous, just like, you know, fast and furious. Um, and then let me go over a bit of the interface. So I always like to get started down in the lower right hand corner with um, this little pencil and this will bring up your tools and your filters. I will talk a bit about some of my favorite filters to use, but the tools is really where the power is in the app. So I'm gonna kinda go through my workflow and then show you some of my favorite things and then you guys can just go ahead and experiment. So to an image is obviously the easiest thing to do. So the way it works is to two different things in your image you take your finger and you slide it up and down and that'll bring up all these different options so you can work with brightness contrast saturation ambiance highlights shadows and warmth um so once you select something to adjust it then you move your finger left to right so if i can really overexpose something or underexpose it um and yeah so i mean obviously here it's everyone's preference I don't want to spend too much time on this because it can get a little boring but as you can see like I'm just adjusting different aspects of something um, one app one part of this that I really like is in the upper right hand corner um, there is a button that you can press and it will give you what your picture looked like as compared to what it looked like to what it looks like now and I always think this is a really nice option to give some perspective of, of how much change you've made and when you like um, something that you've done you're like all right I feel like emotionally secure everything looks good then I go ahead and just hit the check which is on the lower right hand corner or if you don't like something you can hit the X on the left side so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit my check and then that's just one small change now obviously with your details this gets a little bit more specific with structure and sharpening I'm gonna confess to you I don't use it very much especially um sharpening um, can make a change there it's not super noticeable um, also obviously the crop this is already a square but if I wanted to tighten it a bit just to really have it on that cute little cat you can do that some of my other really favorite tools are there is the selective tool which where you can add a certain po like points where you'd want it to either adjust something so here I can put a little point on my cat and it has a B which stands for brightness but if I move my finger up and down It'll give me a choice for contrast and or saturation. So I'm going to make my cat a little bit brighter. Not too much where he doesn't seem to stick out a lot. And let's say maybe I wanted these trees to be a little bit more green. I can just put a B there and go to oh, and select saturation. And <clears throat> there it goes. And the cool thing is, is that if you move the button around like that little area that you've adjusted, it'll apply that same adjustment to wherever it is so it's just kind of a clever little tool um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that so you can see the difference without with without a with yeah it's pretty subtle looks good um, another one here that is actually really cool is the healing button it is not as powerful as one that you would say like you would find on Photoshop um, fix but it kind of does the same thing so I mean there's a window here in the back that I might want to take out so if I just click on it it's very subtle but it does the trick especially if you have something that's bothering you quite a bit so you can just zoom in any race but I actually like what's in the background so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it um I don't think I want a vignette so much but the vignettes does have a lot of options because you can deal with the inner outer brightness so if you make it too dark too bright but for the most part I actually don't like any of these so I'm just gonna hit that X and it's gonna take it away 
So now we're gonna go into my the filters that I really enjoy. There's some awesome ones here. Um, for HDR, you can see it'll give you a certain example. Like if you wanted strong, fine, nature. I really don't like HDR. For drama, here's some different options. You can also change the like how strong your filter is just by moving from left to right your index finger. Um, but the two that I tend to use a lot are actually, uh, one is lens blur, and it's exactly what it sounds like. So you can adjust like how big your blur is, and then the blur strength. So I don't want it to be too overpowering. So if you move it too much, it's all about the cat, or it's just very subtle. So maybe around there. And there's also different styles. You can have different shapes, although it doesn't really matter that much, I've noticed. But I always like to show my students because they think it's like, oh, a heart, how fun. So I'm gonna actually keep it as a circle and hit the check and save my lens blur. And now I'll show you my favorite kind of tool that you can do with Snapseed. And it's this one, it's kind of the masks, which I found out from um, Dave Caleb who works at UWC, which is gotta give him a shout out. So here you can select black and white, go back. And then it's gonna give you different options. So I like high contrast, but you can also do bright, a little darker, you know, grainy. And then within that, you can still actually adjust how powerful stuff is. Um, and it gives you color filters as well. It's just really cool how much it can do. So I'm gonna keep this black and white, but I also like the option where you can do a little bit of color splash. So I'm gonna check this, and then this is like the best part I think about the app. So if you go up where it says save, and then there's actually then the number seven, you hit that number seven and it's gonna bring up all of the things that you did. And then you can actually like go back and like subtly see the changes as you made them. But if I want it, there's a cool thing to do the mask. You hit it again, the option, and then it gives you, you can either trash it, do the mask or you can adjust it. And so we're gonna pick here the little paintbrush inside the box. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to color what I want to be black and white. And it's gonna give you like a little red tint so you know where you've colored. I have um, a really fat finger, so it might not work really well. I actually think I have a little stylus. Um, and so you just start coloring in you can try to be a little bit, if you zoom in, it can probably be a bit more exact, but this isn't you know, meant to be super perfect. That's when you have apps like Photoshop and whatnot, but I'm just gonna paint the background. I want my little kitty to just really rock out. Um, actually, I might just color this because this is black anyways. I just wanna get his little ears. Almost done with this, maybe get down here these edges all right perfect so I like what's going on and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit my check and then now it went in and applied my change now obviously I always get the ear it really frustrates me <laughs> um, but it looks cool my kids really like doing this kind of color splash effect too so just make sure the way to get there is just to show you again you go to where it says like the number seven it gives you all your changes and you open up that to get to your mask. There are lots of other really cool things that you can do. I you know, have to confess, I didn't quite know about the text until a kid made me do it, but they have these really cool badges and things that you can put over and you can affect the transparency. So if you wanted to add um, something, a little word bubble, go ahead and do it. And maybe it's like a cool uh, kind of Instagram post cover. So here, obviously this is Bevis new, so move it around change the text. So maybe I'll just put like Tokyo Drift. I don't know, we're not in Tokyo at all. And then it should change it. I guess I didn't save it. All right, let's see if it does it. You can make it big, you can make it small. It looks awesome. I'm actually gonna delete it, but even with transparency, you can make it stand out a bit, change the colors. There's lots of options, but I don't do that. I think my cat stands out pretty well. Frames, there's tons of them. I think even more than Instagram could even offer you, which is sometimes I think impossible. I'm gonna probably stick to maybe that one. You can change the frame width, which I think is like genius. Something you cannot do in Instagram. So go ahead and check it. And then once you feel emotionally committed to this picture, um, you just go ahead and hit save and it gives you a couple of different options. 
Um, either you can save a copy with changes you can undo or you can export it permanently. I don't think it really matters because it's going to save it no matter what. So I'm just going to hit save a copy and it should be saved in my uh, photo album. Another thing you could do is you could actually open in it or in Instagram and then continue to do some more editing if you want or Snapchat. There's tons of different options. So any kind of photo editings that you have, you can just drop them in there. I hope you've enjoyed this quick little tutorial about my favorite app. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me or write in the comments section. Um, and I can't wait to see what kind of photos you make. Good luck.